my name is Simon. I'm going to show you how to put together this greenhouse, which is a model Janssen's modern pentroof greenhouse. That's what it looks like in the instructions. Instructions seem to be very good, lots of great diagrams. However, they're missing a lot. And I'm going to uh, tell you what I discovered where the instructions are missing. The first thing I'm going to point out is that at the bottom in the corner, they suggest that you leave the corner of the concrete out so that this particular member can go down and then it's potted afterwards as you see I've done but they don't tell you how much concrete to miss out the concrete needs to come to about there and if we measure from the outside corner of the metal then I'm, Sorry, I'm <laughs> reckoning you need 14 centimeters to this about, about this position here and then it leaves enough clearance that's the first thing Next, I'm going to tell you about uh, unpacking the parts. Most of it is very clear. You can see through the plastic wrapping, all the profiles, so you know which ones to unwrap first. But these particular parts are quite important, the screws, nut covers and brackets. They are not marked or anything. Where they are is that they're put into a U-section. I'm taking you up to the very top here. You can see this part here is a U-section. Okay, it's open there. So inside there, they put all the screws in the short pieces. So go and find that one. It tends to be wrapped in white so you can't see inside, but you know what you're looking for to get it. Okay, then we move on to the options. There's no packet list, so I was short, I was getting at all. Uh, in my particular case, I've got a sliding door, two of them, only one of them I've put on. I've got a pivot door, I've got a shelf, which goes across three bays. I've got a louver window and I've got two roof windows. Now the reason why you need to think about it is their placement is that contrary to the instructions, you see this picture here suggests you build all of that then you put the options in. No, you need to think ahead. That's my advice. They have a very good system where in a section you can see that that um, profile retains the screw and the screws move up and down, very good, locked in place and then you can use a tool like this to tighten up the nuts, really nifty. However, if you block off the end, you can't get to them afterwards. So I'm gonna go through all the places where you really need to think ahead. And the first one is the retaining groove for the bottom. You see this one here, it's held by three screws. And the problem is, as soon as you've done this first assembly, that side traps it. So you need to work out whereabouts you want to be putting the sliding doors in one side or separate. Get the screws in first, three for each sliding door, okay? I've got my sliding doors together, so that's going to be six. The next thing is, up here, the top part, that is another groove. And as soon as you put the side on, it's trapped. So once you've put that member on, or each of the members takes the sliding doors, really be careful to slide this in along the groove, and then you're sorted. That will be a, a great benefit. We come to something very simple, which is uh, the shelf. So the shelf is on these same screws, and you can see in the corner it's trapped. So that corner one, again, needs to be put on, you know that pipe, needs to be put on before you put the top cover down. The ones in the centre are really easy to add because this particular member here is very simple to uh, remove and put screws in. Because my shelf goes into the corner, I need to make sure that it's this corner where I've got the screw already. Moving around to the louver window. Now this louver window I put in the centre of one side. I can easily um, take out that and put in these, these, these screws here, okay? But if you're going to put the louver into the corner, then here you really need to make sure all your screws are in place uh, before you put this piece on top. Now, you can drill it out. So take a 12 millimeter drill, and then you can imagine you get these screws in. But it's a real shame to be going mucking about with that when um, you could just plan ahead, deciding where you're going to put all the parts. Another one that's really important, if you've got a turning door, if you see here, the turning door has got a cut out to the threshold. So in the diagram, the instructions they show how the threshold is cut out with a saw. Okay, so this is the saw I used to cut through because you're lining up on the side to get straight cut all the way down, so you end up with this face here. 
The big problem is how do you cut it when you get to the bottom? Because you're scraping against the concrete. They don't tell you about that, it takes forever, really boring to cut it away. So my suggestion is, as soon as you've got the frame up and you've got these diagonals in place, nothing else, so you've got it up to that first level and you've got these diagonals in place, then it's quite stiff. And what I suggest is that you lift up this end and you chock it underneath, a piece of wood on each side, then you can cut through and you get through the bottom and it's really quick. You don't have to cut through the concrete as well. So that's a tip to do with the threshold. Get that done early on. Okay. Uh, then we go on to some, some other tips. Um, what's surprising is that you need these sorts of brackets, such as in the corner here. And although it's obvious they need four screws, they're not drilled already. I've no idea why, lots of other holes. So what I find really useful with these sorts of things is to use this sort of marking gauge. You can do however where half far you want from the end and around the side. It's used by carpenters, but it's great for scratching the surface and marking out and get a really neat job. The next one that's quite tricky, which you need to think ahead to some extent, is this triangular piece that supports the roof. Uh, so first of all, no holes, but you can see here that it needs four screw holes. And the best thing is to drill them beforehand. You drill six millimeter clearance holes on each side. That are neatly arranged and the thing about this is you can't fit in this triangle when you've got the roof member there this one okay <clears throat> so what you have to do is you have to disconnect it from the top lift it out the way and slide this in so it's caught between those two then you can drop the roof member back down and uh it took me a while to figure out but that gets that in really easily okay now I'm going to go on to the turning door because all that came with the turning door is that. Nothing else whatsoever. It's not even very clear which side it opens. But I'm going to show you that there. Show you all about that. So the actual turning door is nothing like in the instructions. You can see that it's a single pane of glass. And what happens is this frame is delivered intact. Okay, nicely done. That comes as a rectangle. That saves a bit of time. So the question then is how do you um, retain the glass on the inside? Well, you put these pieces in, okay? And the problem is they go inside, but they're too long and I have to cut them down. What that means is, I'll show you the piece I cut off. Here's a piece I cut off. So what you can see is that you're looking at the outside there and then these two are pushed into the side of the frame and then that there is the retainer for the rubber seal. Let's see if I can show it in place. So you can see how they ping into the side and then the profile there takes that seal. So that then you can put those four in and it holds the glass in place. That's the first thing. Then we're moving on to Put that piece back down. Then we're moving on to how does the frame go together. So the frame has a profile as you can see. It's essentially an L section and the thing is you need to join it all up because it's got uh, top, sides and bottom. I've now assembled it so I've got a photo here to show how that works. What you can see is you're given these pieces and they slot inside so they hide away and you can't see them. They've got a screw hole and I screwed one in with a self tapper but it's, it's visible. Um, the thing about the bottom though is it's got this, this threshold that covers it all up and then becomes trapped. So I only put screws in for the bottom but none for the sides. And thus you can see we get a very neat finish down the bottom there. Okay, That's the cover whereas this part is uncovered and the sides can have screws as you can see they're the screws holding it into the other bit of the frame and just for good measure I decided to put some screws in the top as well okay just to make it a bit firmer but the good thing about those angle pieces is that now although the bottom's not fixed into the floor it's joined very well at the corner and the screw is under my finger round down the side there now the hinges are very good quality the thing is though 
and they're reversible is that the one part of the door, sorry the one part of the door that's not reversible is the latch mechanism that one has to go on the right hand side when the hinge is on the left and they don't tell you that in fact the hinge piece there arrived on the outer frame the other way up so it's in the upper position to go on the right hand side what a pickle eh? so first of all if you don't want your door to hinge on the left you need to tell your supplier to send you an alternative mechanism for this part okay so it latches the other way otherwise all the other components are reversible because the height of this is exactly halfway up so that you can go left or right the other thing is uh, all the, these pieces here are reversible so underneath here there's a little plastic screw or something you pop off little plastic screw the thing is you can take off the top of these and the bottoms and swap them around so they go the other way finally there is the latch mechanism so here you can see actually it's just this piece uh, they supplied another bit but it's, it's not used at all you only just have to put this one in and luckily they put screw holes for screwing that on finally i'm going to tell you about the roof window uh, because when it comes to the roof window you have to put this cross member on okay here's a cross member and the cross member either comes in a narrow for one side or a wide this side and i use the wide piece and the other thing is how to get this in place uh, because there's no alignment at all so the secret i found is don't put the roof window in yet what you need to do is to slide up the roof glass so you can see the roof glass here goes into a slot it goes up and drops down and the slot is 10 millimeters so what i did is i put a 14 millimeter spacer as you can see there so i slid the glass up by 14 and now it means it's in the highest position it's going to be so i come back up to it so when the glass is in the highest position then i can put my piece here flat against that glass okay and it means it's all square and it's in the right position. Once it's flat against it, I put the screws in each side, take out the spacer, and then the glass has dropped down and I've got a little gap between the glass and this member here. You make the top of this the same as the side. Then once you put the seal on, I haven't put the seal on here yet. Once you put the seal on, it's all going to be the same level. The other useful thing is for the opening bracket to do the two holes beforehand, you can see how they go onto the bottom and there's a couple of screw holes you can kind of work out the position they're going to be in thus you get all this in place it's really useful to get this in place first and to do all the seals because that's quite tricky once the seals are done then you can put on the window and the thing about the window i go down to my high ladder is that this slides into a groove so imagine climbing up this ladder quite high you're balancing in the air and you see the window goes into this groove that becomes a hinge so imagine you're up in the air trying to hold this window trying to align it trying to not fall off once you get it in there you're good but you don't want to be taking it on and off so that's why i suggest it's one of the last things you put in obviously you put before the cover slide it into place then you can do these screws to stop it moving out too far and uh, then you can add the top mechanism for the opening and there we go so uh, hope that's stopped you having the problems I had. I've no idea why the answers don't bother to give the extra details. There you go. Good luck and I hope you enjoy your greenhouse.